Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Talk about IC cores and non-IC cores. Yes, sir. So um, I'm a GC working at a project in South Carolina. Um, and what we're kind of running into right now is we are installing doors and hardware as we speak throughout a building, and we are not installing the cores, of course, because those still need to be submitted and approved by the owner. Um, but as we know, that can take a little bit longer than expected. So they do not – the owner has said they do not want IC cores, Okay. Us as a GC is looking at providing a core that we can use to lock the room so that no one else goes in there, and we we hold security of that room, and whoever goes in and out, we know of, so that we're working with finishes. If something gets messed up in the room, we know yeah. who went in there last because yeah, we you know. have... Correct. So... I guess my question is, does – what would work for us if the owner has said they do not want IC cores in the doors, but they haven't been approved for cores yet from the engineer or architectural engineer, excuse me, um, for us to use as a way of us, the GC, putting in our own core in the assembly that's already installed for the lock? And then we can take that cylinder and core out for the owner to then put their cylinder and core in. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, it does. So the first thing you said was that the owner said, relayed that they do not want IC core. Or is that correct? Co correct. Yes, sir. So, so what do they want if not IC core? And it's a bit From, of a trick question because the – I'll just give you the answer – the only other core type is what we call a conventional core. Okay. Where you can't extract the core easily by using generally a control key. So the first thing that we have, first of all, are locks already on the job site? Locks are already on the job site okay. and installed on the door. They're Very flagged. Um, uh, so there's some... I've got a few pictures of them, and again, I'm I'm trying to learn through a lot of this as well. Um, no, that's good. There's and we're going to get there. Yeah, there's I think five different lock sets that I have. I have office entry locks, classroom locks, functions. Um, yeah, got, you have yeah five got correct. different functions. So, and I do want to see the photos, but when you look at the face of the trim, is there a cylinder or a core installed in the trim now? No, there is nothing installed okay. as of now. Okay. Correct. Yeah, so it's that, just an opening, and you can see a riveted opening for the cylinder to be inserted in that opening of the door. Okay. So is that opening shaped like the letter 8 laying on its side, or is it about the shape and size of a dime? The The openings I have right now are... are They're not shaped like the letter eight. So there's, there's no cylinder installed. It's a hole in the wood door. Um, and then they have the lock mechanism through the side of the door, jam side of the door, inserted in. And what I see is a uh, ribbed where you would put a cylinder in, and then there's like this sideways mountain on either side of that surface. So we're speaking about only the Schlage lock right now. Are they levers or knobs? These are uh, levers. Okay. In the lever now, does it have some type of hole to receive a core or cylinder? It has a hole to receive the cylinder. Okay. 
What is the shape of that hole? How would you describe it? It's just a circle. Okay, so it's about the size and shape of a dime, correct? These are bigger than a dime. These are, uh, I would say... A nickel. Uh, I would say bigger than a half dollar. Huh? In the, in yeah. the lock lever itself, if that lever height is only about one inch tall, how would the prep for the cylinder be bigger than a half dollar? This is this is not so in the in the device for the lever there is no hole. This is a bit for the lock, either above the device handle or on the back side of it. What type? Do you know the model number of the lock that you're working on? Yes, I've got all that. So, yeah, re um, read that off to me if you would. So the Mortis office entry lock. Uh, that is L nine zero five zero L. I see. Okay, I understand now. You have a mortise lock. So, on those doors that take keys, there will need to be an inch and a quarter diameter hole drilled into the door itself. So, assuming that those holes are prepped, meaning that's what we call a function hole. If that hole is already drilled, is there anything in that hole right now, or is that inch and a quarter hole completely open? It's completely open. So there's no okay, okay. No okay. Yeah. Would you would you kindly read the part number one more time? I should have let you get through it before I interrupted you. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, it is L as in Lima, nine zero five zero Lima. Okay. Space zero three Alpha. Okay. Space that Lima five eight three. Dash three six three. Got it. Okay, so that's perfect. What you have is a um, uh, that is a a office function mortise lock. There is an L ninety fifty. That tells me the series and the function. Now the next letter there was L, and what that means is whomever specified or entered the order or whatever when those locks were sent. The L specifically means that there will absolutely not be a mortise cylinder housing or a mortise cylinder at all. So you require two components to achieve your lockup room functionality. You not only need the mortise cylinder or the mortise cylinder housing, but you need the core to go inside of that. So if your client does not want interchangeable core, then you're going to have conventional core. No big deal. You now need to order mortise cylinders that have the proper cam on the back, that have the proper keying that you want. You know, you might you might have five doors that are like this, and you're like, you know what, I need five cylinders. I want them all keyed alike. I need 10 keys total, and I'm going to control who has the key these keys. So you could you could order these mortise cylinders, and when you're done with construction, literally pull them out of the locks and take them with you for the next job. But the L means there are no mortise cylinders installed uh, or supplied. So they they have it in their the middle that there's mortise cylinders, a hundred two hundred um, is uh, there are a hundred two hundred T is what is. Um, Checked out for yeah. this. So I'm assuming that those are the temporary cylinders that me and you are both kind of describing here to where me as the GC have the operating key which can take out the core and that cylinder should be able to screw out and I take that with me, correct? Maybe. Can you tell me the part? So in a standard submittal or a hardware set, if, if someone – in the industry is going to write it correctly. You always actually list the cylinder separately from the lock. Do you have a, a an entry in the hardware set for the cylinder only? And if you do, can you tell me that part number? Uh, yeah, I've got one right here where it's a Mortise cylinder, and it's 100, 200. And then it's a question mark. Uh, then it is Charlie Tango dash Zulu three four.
and the manufacturer is uh, Medeco. Oh, okay. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah. Yes. Excellent. Uh, okay. So the, CT, the uh, CTZ34, that's the cam, and that's the proper cam for Schlage. So is the part number 100200? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yep. So, yeah. So that's that's going to be the permanent core. So what that, the, pardon me, not the core. That's the permanent mortise cylinder for that door. Now, okay. what what you're, what's going to happen now on those 100, 200s, you're never going to see those. The owner's going to hang on to them. And someone's going to go in and install them after you guys are out of there. So the uh, only the only way to do this is in your hardware set they've got medical 100 200 mortise cylinders specified CTZ 34 blah 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 how it's keyed the finish. So you're left with locks that you you have no way of locking. What right. you need to do is you need to order some inexpensive mortise cylinders, install them. Do your thing and take them with you when you're done. But because, uh, and I should say that the more the medical 100 200s, those are not interchangeable core. Those are conventional core. Okay. So there will never be a function of sticking a key in and, and pulling a cylinder, a core out of a cylinder housing. So I think what you need to do is to, is to order up some mortise cylinders. We can provide those with the proper cam. You install them. You're good to go. Okay. And when you're so, and when you're done, you hand them the keys and say, "Keep those cylinders. Just remove them before you install your medicos." Okay, so that's my question: is if we if we get these mortise cylinders, would the, we would be able to unscrew and take out the full assembly of the cylinder and core whenever we leave for the college to then put those hundred two hundred cylinders on with their cores? Yes, sir. That's precisely correct. Everything you just said okay. is exactly what you would do. Okay, because that was the confusion my team had was they the college was saying they don't want IC cores, yeah, and they, I guess they were assuming that the IC was the eight looking core, the figure eight looking core, and that and is correct. No. Oh, so so a figure eight is an IC core. A figure eight would be interchangeable core. We don't know what who's whose platform it is, but we know it's interchangeable core. Okay, okay. So then the standard or conventional is just the single. It, 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 it's just, it is just a non-interchangeable core, and those okay. 100, 200s are conventional. Oh, so instead of the operating key here, the core would stay in the cylinder, and then yeah. we would just move it. I'm picking up what you're putting down now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you never pull the core out of this 100, 200. You never pull oh, okay. it out. It's not like that. Yep. I, this is this is making a lot of sense now. Okay. All right. So yeah, we wouldn't need an operating key. We would just need ten master keys per the. Well, let's lock. let's back that. Let's roll that back a bit. You do need operating okay. keys. I mean, you need a key to operate the lock. We would call it a change key. You don't need a master key because you probably want them all keyed alike and be done with it. You just want what we would technically call SKD1, single keyed, the first group. You're like, give me five or whatever the number is. Give me so many cylinders. Key them all alike. I need so many keys, so many copies of the key because I got my, my, my super. I got me. I got the guy I want to go in there and I want two backups. You know, that kind of business. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And so those. With, I'm going to read you, if you don't mind, the, the list of uh, different locks that we have. And those, if we went with these just conventional mortise cylinders where we can get key to like on all the locks, we wouldn't damage any of the locks, per se, by putting our stuff in there, security purposes, and then removing it. Um, once we're done with the job for the college to then go in with their cylinder and lock? In no way would you damage anything. In no way. Okay. Yeah, that was that was my concern is I think they were, the college was assuming, because that's who we're, we're working for on this project, the college was assuming that 
if we went in with our security cylinder and lock, we were going to damage the lock and lever mechanism by implementing that in and removing it for them once they take over to install theirs. But oh, I don't gosh, see no. that being the rib. We just would screw it in, screw it out. So. Yeah, no, you're you're – there is no harm of doing any any. They won't even know you did it by the time you leave. If you told no one, no one would know unless they saw it. Okay. And yeah. Are you, um, if you don't, are you locks are not really good during construction if you can't lock them. If you can't leave your job box there and and know someone didn't walk off with it, you know it's, there should have been a provision for that. Keys go missing. I keep my keys on me all the time. Um, yeah. And they all over the place. Um, yeah. But are you Richard Howard by any chance? Yes, sir, I am. I, I actually looked up your YouTube video less than an hour ago because this, this comment came up to, to my desk, and I typed it in YouTube, Standard versus IC Cores, um, and I looked up Architectural Building Supply, uh, Builder Supply, excuse me. Um, so I'm glad I got you on the phone because I watched your YouTube video, and I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to speak to someone like this, so I ended up searching you guys up and, and making a phone call, but I, I awesome. really appreciate you. Um, I'm going to save this number onto my phone. And again, my name's Colin Jumper. I'm going to talk to my team. And um, you said you did supply uh, just regular mortise cylinders that we could possibly use for security settings on our job. Oh, I can easily supply that to you. That's like, that's like French fries at a hot dog stand. It's going to happen. Awesome. Well, I will save uh, this number on my phone, and then once my team gets out of the meeting, I'll uh, reach back out to you and, and let you know what we decide. But thank I'm you. I'm glad so you called, sir. Today. Yes, sir. You have a You too. Bye bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Okay, let's see if we can unpack a bunch of that. So the client said that the owner does not want interchangeable core, meaning I think they said non-IC. So there's two core types when it comes to builder's hardware for purposes of this conversation. There's conventional core, and then there's interchangeable core. Conventional core is just you have a cylinder, whatever it is, you stick the key in and you operate the lock. Interchangeable core is a cylinder and you stick the key in and you operate the lock, except the difference is in interchangeable core, you can insert a special tool, generally a key, and we call it a control key. You can insert that and you can pull the core right on out. The, the reason that that's done is because you can then stick a core right back in there, meaning a different core, meaning a core that's been keyed differently, meaning somebody gets terminated Friday at 4 o'clock, they have their key, they've not surrendered it, you go in and within seconds you've pulled that core out and you've stuck a new one in. I believe I think I understood that this was a college. A college should definitely have interchangeable core because you can easily control rights and privileges via that control key. So that's the difference between the two technologies. The client has L9050s and other functions, but the L in the part number means that that lock was shipped without, not only without a core, but without a cylinder or without a housing. So when it's conventional core, we just say a cylinder, and in this case, a mortise cylinder. When it's interchangeable core, we say it's a housing, and then the core. The core goes into the housing. If you put the two of them together, you have a mortise cylinder. But in conventional core, we just call it a mortise cylinder. So this client needs to lock up some doors. It's construction, probably a very large project, uh, if it's a college, and they need to lock rooms down. They don't want anyone going in there. They've done their polyurethane, whatever finishing or painting they're doing, and they want no one going in there and putting their handprint on everything. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. So all they really need, and I'll show you in a moment, are inch and an eighth mortise cylinders with a, with a Schlage you know, style cam, and we're off to the races. Let's switch to the screen view, and let's just look at some of the things that uh, we discussed on the telephone. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, let's dive into the part number. Let's start with Schlage. And we're going to pull up the Schlage catalog, or the Schlage, the Schlage manufacturer page within our website. So I have a link here called a 
cylinder suffix guide or something like that. Yeah, cylinder suffix guide right here. So I keep this there because I always forget what their letters mean. So P, L, all the way through B, D, C. Well, L means less conventional cylinder. What that means is in the mortise lock, it's not going to include the mortise cylinder. They're literally going to not include it. And the reason you, if you were the college, you don't want the mortise cylinder is because there's a deduct. If the list price on that lock is $1,000, there's going to be a $50 deduct. When you indicate L, you're saying, I don't want this, I don't need this, I will take the deduct. And that would be what you would want to do when you're going to provide mortise cylinders by, an, by a different manufacturer. So the L9050L means less, it means less conventional cylinder is what it means. So then what the client came up with is Medical 100-200. And I don't have their part numbers memorized very well, so forgive me. Um, but just looking at the Medico site, you know, you're, you're basically dealing with, and I, I don't have the paperwork in front of me in terms of their part numbers, but this is, let's just agree that this is a 100-200. This is going to be a mortise cylinder at the proper length, and it's inch and an eighth, that has, this is a mortise cylinder. Um, this is going to have the cylinder plug. It'll be keyed the way that they specify, etc. The client also said that they had a CTZ43. Now, that's really, really important to know because you need to know whose cam you require on the back of the cylinder. I think they said CTZ43. Uh, CTC, oh, CTC uh, 34, had it backwards. Okay, so here's a, this is the cam, is the bottom line. This is the cam that needs to go on the back of the, I don't think I have a picture of this here, I don't. Let's pull up the Med Medico site and let's see if they show us a photo. They, they'll at least give us line art is what they'll do. CTZ34. Here we go. It's actually a CT-Z34. And here it is. Like I said, I don't have their numbers memorized. So if you're putting a medical cylinder into a Schlage lock, most Schlage locks, you must have a cam that is shaped like this. If you don't, it's not going to work, meaning the lock won't work correctly. The key will not operate the lock correctly. And when we look at the medical catalog, you'll see Different lock, you know, Yale, Dominion, Corbin Russwin, well, certain Corbin Russwin, Medico, Falcon, on and on and on. Best, Marks, Vincard. You get the idea that if you don't have the right shaped cam, it's not going to operate the lock correctly because inside of the mortise lock, I'm going to show this to you since we're already doing the work to investigate this properly. Uh, service manual. Okay, L9050. It's a very large document, so 
it's indexing all the result the uh, returned results okay awesome here's an L9050 the bottom line is this part right here that bird's mouth shaped item Part 27, yeah, part 27, it's called a turn hub. So the way that the cam interacts with this, it has to have a particular shape to throw this, to make this articulate and move. Um, and if you've got the wrong shape of cam, it's just not going to work, is the moral of the story. Okay, the wrong shape's not going to work. It has to be relieved like this. Okay, so that's why the CT-Z34 uh, is really is, uh, is, is required. Now, I showed you a picture of what a conventional cylinder looked like, at least from the Medeco. Conventional cylinder. Let's take a look at what a interchangeable core uh, and that's why I was asking the client if the preparation looked like a um, figure eight or a dime. What I didn't realize is that he had L, sh L locks, meaning he didn't have any housing at all. I was expecting him to say it would, you know, it would either be a figure eight like this. So this is literally what a mortise cylinder housing looks like. So when we do conventional core, it's a mortise cylinder. When we do intercha interchangeable core, now there's two parts. Here's a great picture. I'm not sure who, what, whose website this is, but this is a housing. This is a core. In fact, this is a combinated core. You need both of these to make it work, unless you're going simply with conventional core, and that's what that is. Okay, That's, that's the deal with, with all of that. Um, and it is this type of system that you must have the control key. This is shown upside down that this should all be rotated 180 degrees. You wouldn't install it this way. You definitely would not install it this way. In fact, you couldn't install it this way because the lock won't work right because the cam will be upside down. So it needs to look, well, here's a great, here's, you know, it, need, it needs to look like this. Okay, control key, core goes into the housing. Conventional core, there is no core. We call this a cylinder plug because that's part of the anatomy of a mortise cylinder, that that's the plug. This is the shell, some people will call this. But we don't call a mortise cylinder housing a shell. This is not a shell. This is just a mortise cylinder housing. A shell means conventional core, at least it does to me. So what I'm recommending that the client do is that they simply... Um, is that they simply order from us a mortise cylinder. Inch and an eighth is what that 100, 200 Medeco cylinder is in length. The client can order this mortise cylinder. Uh, ignore the color, it's just a generic color. And in fact, I might order an odd color so the client knows that these are construction cores. And you'll note that this part number comes with, it's a 7185 inch, that means inch and an eighth. It's got a Schlage C keyway and it has a number one cam. Well, that's the 863G there. Well, that's no good. So I would suggest what the client do is buy the 7185 cylinder, but he specify it with the proper cam. It wouldn't be a number one cam. For Schlage, it's gonna be a 15 cam. So that part number becomes 7185, SC, if you want a Schlage C keyway, dash one five, and then it'll have the right cam on it. Then the client says, give me, you know, give me key to like, key differently, whatever, whatever you want, no big deal. That's just basic. And these are all the cams. And that's what I would suggest the client buy because that original Schlage mortise cylinder is going to be really expensive. This, this, this isn't a good example at $104. But it's going to be really expensive, and those Kaba Ilko cylinders are a lot less expensive because you don't need to spend a lot of money on this. You just 
need to have security. And if you don't have anything in the hole in the lock, I would be able to easily stick my finger in the hole that's drilled in the door, and with my finger I could effect, I could stick it in here and throw that. I'd be able to pull the latch bolt back as a result. So there's no security when there's nothing there, is the bottom line. Okay, let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Okay, so that was pretty fun going all over that with the client and with you here. If there's any questions on how to expand on this, please feel free to reach out to us. Locksmithing is always really fun. It's a tremendous area of discipline in terms of knowledge that once you start down the road of learning it or possessing it and refining it over time, you can really leverage that knowledge when it comes to basic mechanical security. Not only did I know from the part number that he didn't have a mortise cylinder at all, but knowing about locksmithing, about how cams work, about you know lengths of cylinders required, keying aspects, how do you want them keyed, it all helps solve the problem. That fell on the phone as a general contractor. His area of discipline or expertise is not in locksmithing, nor, nor likely does he have, it, have time for it to be. That's why people like us exist. And if you have any questions on this or anything else, uh, Schlage, Medico, locksmithing related, reach out to us. We'll do our best to find the answer. Thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.